Hey everybody, welcome back to Fantasy Valley. This is the 10th video in the series and it's also the second to last video of the Asian part. Which means that it's kind of the calm before the storm before we get into the backstage area and making everything of this area come together in the next part. And the big magnum opus which is going to be this station. And there isn't really too much that we're really going to be adding in this episode so it's a bit more relaxing and more of a laid back recording here, just doing a bunch of stuff to finish off the plaza which was still pretty empty at this point and adding any kinds of detail that I deemed necessary until we could move on into finishing this part. So what we're going for, for starters, is making a building on the corner here. Uh, now I wanted to get a building over here for a couple of reasons. First I really just wanted to keep a row of facades around the lake. So there will be some kind of ways to keep the facades up pretty high between this building and the very European main streets. And that will also be the gate towards Southeast Asia at some point in the future. So that we have one nice row of buildings which all kind of hopefully blend very smoothly into each other and into the different kinds of areas that we have. But at the same time this building is also kind of necessary because it gives the plaza on the other side also an idea of actually being a plaza that's kind of enclosed by this Asian town around it, especially since the plaza with the whirly rig on top of it is raised a little bit and it has that little hill on this side here. I was very afraid that the plaza would end up looking too open and um, like it's less of a plaza in a cozy little Asian area and more of like wide open area where I didn't really know what to do with it so I really wanted to make sure that around every part of that plaza and not just the mountain itself I had some high stuff to look around and kind of feel as if you're in this Asian village so this building is really here to kind of set the mood for both sides from which you can look at it and it's gonna look completely different from both sides as well especially since you look uh, at the building from the other side from a higher plane so it's gonna be looking quite a bit shorter from the other side so I had to make sure that it actually looks decent as a tall two-story building but on the other side it's gonna be a one-story building and it's gonna be quite a bit lower but that's all gonna work out hopefully fine in the end it's mostly inspired I took a bunch of like different reference ideas for things that I wanted to realistically get in but it's mostly really inspired by the Yu Garden in Shanghai which has the same kind of color palettes, the building shape and everything is really uh, made for this specific place here, but it actually brought me a couple of ideas. Now one of those was that I wanted to play around with the windows a bit more. Many of the windows in the Asian area so far, even though I did a lot of experimenting to get different kinds of windows in because they're such an important part and such a unique part as well of this kind of building. But many of them are still somewhat the same and I never really took a big risk and started putting random stuff together and hopefully finding some things that randomly looked good and that's why I really wanted to try here and I ended up sinking these uh, medieval windows or the gothic windows into a black background which kind of gives you a pretty nice pattern. It's definitely not the exact kind of Chinese pattern that you would maybe like to see in a case like this but it definitely gives the same sort of vibe and same texture, especially if you look from a distance, and I'm actually really happy with how these things turn out. It's pretty good just for the variation, to have some different kinds of ways to play around with this stuff, and it was just fun as well to play around with the ways of creating patterns on these walls. I again just wanted to be a bit careful with this as well, since the Asian area is definitely sucking up a lot of police, which is not that great and um, I can already feel my frame rate sinking quite a bit and I get a few comments about this every now and then. I do have an i5 and a GTX 970 which should be able to at least take it somewhat decent but my FPS has already dropped like um, three times since I started recording this series. Probably even more and it's down to about 20 at this point. The only thing which I can really bank on at this point is that um, FPS right now it really seems to be based on whatever is actually in your field of view whereas before in Alpha 1 for example the FPS would stay the same no matter what you're really looking at but I'm not 100% sure about this but it, it definitely seems like the game is really only rendering what you see at this point which is good because I can actually get the FPS up to 50 again if I just look away from the Asian area so the other areas will definitely be manageable but for this part here 
I still wanted to not go too crazy with everything and completely ruin the project that way. And a couple of final uh, finishing touches that I wanted to add to the building. Well, not really finishing, but a few other things that I wanted to play with are the doors, since there aren't really any Asian doors in the game either, and I kept the doors pretty simple so far. More or less just the sliding kind of things that already fit into the frameworks that I had before, but making a round door with a kind of half arch on top of it was a fun idea that I've seen on, well, you see on many Asian buildings, and one that I didn't really try before, so I quickly wanted to do it there. And that pretty much concludes it for the front of the building. The back of the building is a little bit more simple, but it's also a bit more complex in the way that it's set up. It has this separate building which is slightly rotated to fit right along the queue of the whirly rig here, which makes everything, the entire composition I feel of the building, a bit more interesting from this side, since it is such a very low building. And I still wanted to play around with like different roofs and different details on it, having that extra roof that sticks out from like a little bit of a diagonal angle seems to make it a bit more interesting and also make sure that the queue is covered up for a little bit. Um, and back to the front side, I still had to finish the lower floor of the building, which I ended up making in a very simple way and much more similar to the things that I've already made at this point. I kind of just wanted to get it over with, to be very honest. I might be putting some kind of stuff in this building since as of now, the building doesn't really have any kind of function beside looking nice but I might also put like an information kind of thing in this building if there's really any kind of facility that I still need in the Asian area that I don't have when it's finished I can always just remove one of these walls and put a facility in there it's just that for now this was the best looking thing I figured and gave the best idea of what this building would eventually start looking like it also fits in to give it some different kinds of textures since the the second floor or uh, the first floor actually and the second floor all have this white stucco pattern with framework. I definitely wanted to get some different textures into the base floor. Um, so that's why I wanted to use a lot more wood and stone for that floor. Now here's where it's going to get interesting because I had been procrastinating on this for such a long time. But I really, really wanted to try it with this building because it seemed like the perfect fit. It was really what I had in mind for this building to work with all along. And I kept pushing it away, but it was really finally time to do it. It's actually making a roof with eight sides. The reason that I was hesitating to do so is just because it's pretty hard to do it. And it takes a lot of pieces, like you have to figure out exactly where you're going to place everything. And it's also quite tough because you don't really have a great idea of what the roof is going to look like until it's completely finished and there's no going back after that. So <laughs> I wasn't entirely sure how this was going to work out while I was building it. But these octagonal roofs are just something that you see on many of these Chinese buildings and it's something that I really wanted to feature in here. I didn't have it at all in the Asian area and I felt super bad about it. So um, yeah, I wanted to give it a shot and probably torture myself with the making of it in the meantime. Uh, so the way that I really wanted to do it here is lay out the basic framework first, so I have a bit of a reference of how everything is going to work out. The diagonal beam had to be made separately from the regular one, so I had to constantly check whether they were actually the same length and going down to the same height, which they seemed to be, so that was okay. And then I had to fill in the middle pieces with the wooden planks to actually give it that sort of roof like texture to it which is this is where all the polys are at and this is where it's gonna lag my cam a little bit um so that was the middle part and then finally for the very last part of the roof i had to make sure that it actually looks like a tiled roof from the side as well so i ended up putting the pillars on the side here matching up with the placement of the planks to make it look as if there is actually a fancy chinese tiled roof and that is the very basic roof but it doesn't really have too much of a shape on its own so I wanted to finish it off with some very basic details around the edges and the top of the roof. So I placed some planks on the side. I put that very small golden kind of curl on the side. Uh, because these, go these golden ornaments are something that you actually see on many of these kinds of roofs. And I figured it would fit in quite nicely here. A couple of railings just to make the frames a bit more interesting. And I also quickly wanted to fill in the rest of the roofs with very similar ornaments just to make sure that the entire style of the building is consistent throughout all of the different roofs. 
And um, the last thing that I wanted to do here, I'm not entirely sure if I remember. Oh yeah, first I actually had to finish a little like plateau underneath the roof to actually have something which the roof can stand on and give a small pavilion on top of the building. Which was a bit of a struggle for a while because it turned out to be a little bit fat when I first built it. Uh, but then it turned out that just placing the railing inside a little bit more made the entire appearance of the top of the roof a little bit less fat, a bit more elegant, and I'm quite happy with how that turned out. And the very final element of the roof is the top part, where I didn't want to go too crazy, but I at least wanted to add some fancy bits to it, and ended up stacking whatever kind of scenery element was really working out here, and putting a bunch of ridiculous stuff together until it looked good pretty much. And in the end, I am pretty happy with how uh, the different roof elements and different planks and wooden brackets all work together to make this fancy spire. Which is funny, because one of the reasons that I do feel that this entire build is at least a little bit more fantasy than just complete, completely being Chinese or Japanese is in a very subtle thing, but something which you don't really see in Asian architecture cultures that much, is that a lot of the, the focus on building shapes in these kinds of Asian architecture is very horizontal. You have the wide roofs, you have like the very wide square buildings with a lot of the details on the roofs and on the walls, but you don't actually have any very tall spires or towers, clock towers and uh, large castle gates as you would have a European architecture, which is super vertical, especially if you have like Gothic kind of architecture and what I still really wanted to try here is, as much as I could, add all of these ridiculous over-the-top vertical elements that you probably wouldn't see in most real Asian buildings. Um, and one of those examples would really be the spire on top of the pavilion, which is quite a bit larger than a real Asian counterpart would usually make it. But it's those kinds of details are really mostly in some of the other buildings which I made, like the towers or... The building which is right next to the Japanese gate, which has like a couple of vertical spires which don't actually make that much architectural sense. Um, it's really in that kind of stuff that I at least wanted to make it a bit less realistic and try and play around with things to make it a bit more attractive for a theme park. Anyway, moving on because I am super lagging behind. One way in which I wanted to fill in the side of this plaza to enclose it a bit more, make it a bit more like it's a cute, cozy little town plaza, is to add a wall on this side. The reason I wanted to add a wall instead of buildings is, well, for one, because it's <laughs> very time-saving. I didn't want to go and make a lot of buildings over here. kind of want to move on at this point. But also, it uh, helps actually keep this space behind it quite open. There's not a lot of space left here for the Southeast Asian area, and I definitely want to keep as much open as I can. So I got this sort of Japanese Zen garden inspired wall that you well mostly see around many gardens or samurai homes that kind of stuff with a bunch of decorations some windows and things that you wouldn't really see on a wall like this but are still pretty nice to look at from this side so I figured why not add them and that pretty much finishes that side but there's one last building that I wanted to build right here and it's not really a building per se it's just a bit of a small pavilion and it's a small entrance into the queue of the whirly rig which is kind of stupid, because it is just a whirly rig. I mean, who gives a shit about a whirly rig? It's just a kiddie ride, and perhaps I shouldn't put so much uh, effort into theming it anyway, but um, I wanted to add a building over here, just because it is a good way to get another building in with some kind of purpose, that just being the entrance of a queue, uh, which makes the entire area a bit more interesting than if I would just have a wall run around it the entire time, and it's also a nice opportunity to play around with some different things again. Because what I also didn't do yet is try to make a round, uh, more European kind of little tower roof. Which is something that you rarely see, but I have seen it on a couple of occasions and I figured it might actually fit in here. And it's it can always be a fun thing to play around with. And if it works, we can keep it. And that's pretty much the idea that I went into this little part in with. So, um... Yeah, I decided to play around with that for a bit. It's gonna be pretty simple. Just one quarter of a very simple, really kind of castle-like roof here with the details that should really hopefully make it look Asian in the end. And the reason that I wanted to put all of these weird scenery stuff underneath it and why I eventually ended up stuffing a burger underneath the roof is because I wanted to support it with some kind of more Asian-like way to support it. 
as opposed to just having a couple of wooden beams to hold it up. So that's what we're going for here. And finally, I had to insert a couple of different wall sections to actually make sure that the entire thing is one big solid piece that you can stick right on top of that roof and actually have it all just be sound and looking good, hopefully. And there's also another way in which I think the tower can actually be quite handy. You might be looking at it at this point and figuring, why the hell did you do that? That looks pretty damn weird. I wanted to get some kind of high vertical marker on this building, just because everything else around this area is going to be pretty low. The wall is pretty low, there's going to be a bit of foliage behind it, but there's no real like building element that you can see from far away. And that's where the tower, and in a little bit as well, the roof behind, uh, underneath it comes in. You can actually still see the tower peak up if you're looking at this part of the park from, say for instance, the bridge down at the tea house, or if you're walking into this area if you come over the paths underneath the flying coaster, which doesn't make too much of a difference. It definitely isn't some kind of big weenie that you see in the distance and are like, wow, that's amazing, I want to go there. But it is at least something that provides a bit of a backdrop. It's a bit taller and it peeks out a bit and gives you the idea that there are actually buildings and that there is actually a town plaza in the distance if you look at this place from a bit further away instead of just being one big foliage wall which it would otherwise look like. So it just kind of brings in the Asian town setting a bit more if you look at this area from a different kind of perspective. So in that sense, I guess it's also uh, a bit of a mini weenie, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. Um, I'm probably going to have to explain that term every now and then. If you're a new viewer, by the way, a weenie is basically a building that is designed to kind of attract people into a certain area that you look at from a distance, say the Disney castle or the Disney Space Mountain building. That kind of stuff is basically what a weenie is all about. And this building is way too small to actually be a weenie. But still, I wanted to have it for a similar kind of function. And the rest of the detailing kind of reflects that as well. At this point, I didn't really give too much of a shit anymore. And I just wanted to finish it in a way that would fit in with the rest of the area. Try to mix a bunch of different elements, which I didn't really mix before. Like the very small pillar elements on top of the pillars underneath the roof, which actually fit in quite well. And I figured, hey, might actually use that in the station in the future as well and a bunch of different planters and small objects to make everything look a bit more charming, but that's really just about it. No rocket science going on there. Now when the rocket science is going to happen though, it is going to be in the next episode. Or it's not exactly going to be rocket science, but I am looking forward to it. It's one of my favorite episodes. And I'll be building the station and off screen doing the backstage areas and basically making the entire area finished. So hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I hope to see you guys next time.